Okay, um, we're going to do an example here on solving a linear set of equations. We're actually, these will be called the kinematical equations a little bit later. So let's set up this problem here. So first I'll bring our picture. And what we have is a pretty common, a typical problem where we have a car that's driving along. The direction the car is moving, the, you know, the forward direction is the BX and BY would be like the lateral motion and Q3 would be its yaw. And what I've defined is a kind of natural set of coordinate systems to locate the center of mass, BCM. This, this is body B, obviously. Uh, so Q1 will be like the, you know, the horizontal and X component of its location, or X component, and the Q2 will be the, the N, Y, or Y component of its uh, position. So I can locate this body, knowing its X and Y positions, and then its uh, rotation. So Q3, that would define this, the, the, lo the location of this car. Um, and from a, a mathematical standpoint, it makes a lot of sense to do that. Uh, however, from an experimentalist state of stamp standpoint, uh, it doesn't make much sense because those actually kind of kind of hard to measure. More likely, I would be able to measure, for example, the uh, the longitudinal velocity, which would be the velocity in the bx direction. That's what my speedometer would read, for example. And I could also measure its lateral velocity and its yaw rate using like a gyro or something. So we have this compat this this incompatible. A set of equations. Like for example, I would have two sets of equations. One would be the velocity of BCM in the NX and Y coordinate system, and the other one would be the velocity of BCM in the BX and BY, or the body coordinate system. Um, these two are obviously the same thing, the velocity of BCM in the Newtonian reference frame, but they're expressed in different bases. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. Uh, so I got a rigid, rigid uh, Newtonian from N, rigid body B, uh, the variables Q1, Q1 prime, Q2, Q prime, Q2 prime, Q3, and Q3 prime. I'm going to uh, also declare some variables, Vx, Vy, and omega z. Uh, and so Vx will be the, the speed in the Bx direction. Vy will be the speed in the By direction. And omega z will be the, the angular speed about the Bz axis. Okay, so I'm going to set this up first using the, the regular uh, NX and Y components. So B rotates Z, so B rotates about the Z axis uh, relative to N amount Q3. That's just shown here. Um, okay, uh, and it spits out the rotation matrix. And because I gave it both uh, Q3 and Q3 prime, it's, it spits out um, uh, omega B and N, which is the angular velocity. If I gave it Q3 double prime, it would have given me alpha being in also, but I, I don't need it for this particular example. Okay, so what else we got going on here? So I go ahead and set the velocity. As we said before, I'm just using this upper definition here. So I said the velocity of BCM equals Q1 dot NX plus Q2 dot NY. That's by observation. I can see this. This is Q1 dot in the NX direction and Q2 dot in the NY direction. That's just by observation. Okay, so I go ahead and set the velocity and it spits back the velocity of BCM and N uh, equals Q1 dot NX plus Q2 dot NY. Okay, just like we expect. Uh, now I'm going to express this velocity, and I actually use the motion genesis command, bcm get velocity, and I'm making a little note here. I could have just said express the velocity of bcm in n. I could have ex just expressed this vector in n, but I'm using the full command here because I like to use it because sometimes uh, students mistake, forget what this is, and so I like to use the bcm get velocity in n. It's a long expression, but you don't need to make any mistakes. Okay, when I express this, this vector in b, which is basically what this I did here. Right? I expressed this vector, right, which I just defined, I expressed it in B. Well, it gives me back this kind of long result. It says, hey, you know, uh, this, this answer is, I, I didn't say it equal to anything, I just asked it for it. So I didn't say something equals express, I just expressed it. And it says, uh, sine Q3, Q2 dot, plus, plus, a bunch of stuff. It's got a bunch of stuff times BX and a bunch of stuff times BY. Hmm. That's not really what I really want. I can see that Vx equals all this stuff, all the measure number here for Vx, and Vy is all this stuff here. Right? I can see that's the case. Um, but I want to get motion genesis to tell me that. Okay? Uh, and the same thing here. I say express uh, the angular velocity of B and N uh, in B. And of course, it just tells me Q3 dot equals Bz. So I can see that omega z will equal, B th will equal Q3 dot. That's not a problem. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define some new vectors here. V, B, C, M, and N. Now, it knows that the velocity of this, this expression, of velocity underscore B, C, M underscore N, it knows that's the velocity of B, C, uh, the velocity of the center mass of B. This vector here, I'm making it look like that because I need another description. Right? I can't use that same vector because I already use it once, so I'm just making another vector that looks very similar. I just took out the underscores. I think I set these two things equal to each other, so here we go. So I, this is the second one here, velocity of B, C, 
m in n equals vx times bx plus vy times by. So that's the definition. It, it returns, okay, I got the definition. And I'll say omega b and n equals omega z, b, z. Okay, all right. So now I've got, it knows this one, right? It's got it here in line 16, and it's got now this, this lower expression in line 20 here. So it's got both expressions. I just need to set them equal to each other, okay? So I'm gonna set them equal to each other. Now what I have here is, um, when I set these two things equal to each other, you can see that that's basically system equations. I didn't show the omegas, but, but you can imagine what that is. So here's my system equations I have. I ha have Vx equals, and I can tell this, right? So I look up back here, and I say that uh, Vx equals sine Q3 times Q2 dot, that's the sine Q3 times Q2 dot, right? Plus cosine Q3 Q1 dot, cosine Q3 Q1 dot. Right, that's the first term there. And I can see that Vy equals cosine Q3 times Q2 dot, cosine Q3 times Q2 dot, and my negative sine Q3 Q1 dot, negative sine Q3 Q1 dot. And I can see that omega z equals Q3 dot. So what I have is a system of equations, which is great. I can see that by observation. But it turns out that what I really want is the inverse to the system equations. This is Vx, Vy, v, omega z in terms of q1 dot, q2 dot, q3 dot. I know what that is. Really what I want is the inverse of that. And so I'm going to ask motion genesis to invert those equations. And so, so I set this equation up. I'm making a system of equations. So I say dot this vector here minus BCM, right? So if I take... So these two equations are supposed to be equal to each other. So also if I take one minus the other, you'll get zero, right? <laughs> That's why I called it zero. So I'm taking this equation here, subtracting my first upper equation here, and I should get zero. And I'm just dotting with bx to get one component of it. And then I'll do the same thing with dot by and the same thing with dot bz. And I'll get three equations that are all supposed to be equal to zero. A system of three equations equal to zero. And I'm going to ask motion genesis to solve those. So I go in here and say, here are the system of three equations. Solve this system equations. Zero is my system equations for q1 dot, q2 dot, q3 dot. So I've told it this set of equations, and I'm saying solve the set of equations for q1 dot, q2 dot, q3 dot. And it goes ahead and spits it out here. And what it gets back is this. It says q1 dot equals vx times cosine q3, vx times cosine q3, minus vy sine q3, minus vy sine q3, right, and et cetera, et cetera. And of course, we knew this, because if you look at this equation, my, our original set of equations, this looks just like a rotation matrix. And we know from what we've learned so far that to invert a rotation matrix, all we have to do is take the, the transpose, right? We can invert a rotation matrix in under five seconds. So here we go. I'll invert this equation. Bingo, right? I could would have gotten this one. So it gives us what we expected. Of course, that's what we're trying to do as an example. We're trying to do something that we know what the answer is, so we can have a little faith that it's doing that we're doing it correctly. And so we've taken the system equations, Vx, Vy, Vz equals this stuff, and I've inverted it. Now I know that q1 dot equals, q2 dot equals, and q3 dot equals. Now, just to show here I dotted with Bx, By, Bz, just to show it doesn't matter what reference frame I used, I just need a system of three independent equations. I have these equations, I set them equal to each other, I dot with bx, by, bz. Well, I could have dotted with nx, ny, nz, right? That's the same three, same, same system of equations. And so I'm just showing you here that it doesn't make a difference. So I take this, this uh, upper one or lower one, so a velocity bcm, bcm in n, minus this upper one, and now I dot with nx. And notice here, I got a little uh, lazy and I did the velocity of BCM and N versus up here I said BCM get velocity and N. So this is obviously longer to write, but sometimes, again, sometimes students mix up uh, the order that these go in. And so I'd like to use this one, but sometimes they get lazy and I do it. So here we go. So that's the uh, subtraction NX, the difference NY, and the difference NZ. Again, dotting it. And I say solve it again. Here I call them zero twos because that's zero, I call it zero two, so I mean another system of equations. And I want to solve for q1 dot, q2 dot, q3 dot. And it says, hey, wait a minute, I already did that. Do you want me to write it? I said, yes. And you can go ahead and see that you get the exact same answer. q1 dot equals vx cosine q3, right? You get the exact same. So 44, 45, and 46 are the same as 31, 32, and 33, which they should be, right? It doesn't matter what I dot them with, I should get the exact same answer. I don't get the same set of equations but I get the exact same answer. Okay, uh, that's the, uh, the lesson in a nutshell. This is how you solve 
a set of linear equations using motion genesis. And most of the time we need to do this is because we're trying to get after the kinematical equations. Okay? We have defined some generalized speeds. I need to know what the kinematic equations are. That'll be a topic of another a video.